Hello again, my name is Jesko and I am here once more to teach you home studio acoustic treatment techniques for audio professionals but without all the voodoo. And what I want to discuss with you today is carpets. Should you put a carpet down in your room, in your home studio? This is a question that uh, comes up often because it does get thrown around a lot that one of the first things you should really do if you're dealing with an untreated room is to put down a carpet. So I want to show you what a carpet actually does in terms of acoustics in the room, what it might help with, what it definitely doesn't help with, <coughs> floor reflection, and what you need to know in order to make the decision whether you should put a carpet down in your home studio. Let's start by looking at the typical absorption coefficient that usual carpets that you would put in a living room or in a studio would actually have. So this is a simple graph of absorption coefficients over frequency, right? So we've got our audible spectrum from 20 hertz up to 20 kilohertz on the x-axis, and then we've got absorption coefficient going from 0 to 1, or from 0% to 100% on the vertical axis. And I've plotted two lines here. The blue one is a, the absorption coefficient of a rather thin carpet, so anything below about five millimeters or below a quarter of an inch maybe. And what we can see here is it basically has zero absorption up to around 500 hertz, and then kind of gradually rises up to maybe 50% absorption at eight kilohertz, right? So this really thin carpet only really absorbs properly above maybe 4,000 hertz. Below that, it's kind of ineffective. Now, if you go to a thicker carpet, so that would be the red line here, so that's anything above a quarter of an inch or about five millimeters, we can see that the, the trend is still the same. It still kind of looks the same. We just get a bit more absorption at those same frequencies. So now we're rising up to about 0.770% at eight kilohertz. But again, this is obviously a high frequency absorber. Carpets don't absorb low frequencies at all. They don't even absorb mids very well. This really is a high frequency absorber. And putting such a large surface area of high frequency absorption in your room basically means that you're just taking away a lot of the energy at those high frequencies available in your room. So we could basically describe a carpet as just a very thin, very badly performing high frequency absorber. That's, that's basically what it is. Now let's look at what that might actually do for us in our studio. So one of the typical things that often get mentioned when we're talking about carpets is that it might help with the floor reflection. Now just as a reminder, the floor reflection is basically just like any other reflection in your room. It's the, the first order reflection, the, the, the reflection path the sound takes when it leaves the speaker, bounces off of the floor and then hits your ear, right? And what that does is it mixes with the direct sound from your speakers, just like any other reflection would, and creates a comb filter. Now, the really important thing to know here is where does that comb filter actually sit in the spectrum? Where does it cause the most issues? And a simple way to figure that out is to look at the first dip that is created by this reflection. So the first dip in this comb filter, that's usually the, the, the one that's the most pronounced, the strongest one that causes the most damage to our frequency response. So to figure out where that dip lies, I'm gonna just use this very simple calculator that I found online by just Googling for a floor reflection calculator, floor bounce calculator, but I'll also link it in the description for you. And it's super simplified. It doesn't paint the picture, the complete picture of floor reflections at all, but it gives us a very quick way to estimate where the first cancellation occurs in the frequency spectrum, depending on the position of the speaker and the ear, the listener. Or the microphone. So I'm just going to put in typical values that you would find in a home studio, right? So we're going to start with the height of the bass woofer, of the low frequency woofer in the speaker, the height of that above the floor. And 100 centimeters, roughly three feet is actually a good starting point, so I'm going to leave that as it is. That's usually how high speakers tend to be set up when you're sitting down listening to your speakers 
and they're placed at ear height. So obviously the next thing is the actual ear height. That tends to be a bit higher, something like 120 centimeters, maybe four feet. And then we've got the distance between the ear and the speaker and in a small room, in a small home studio, that's usually something around 100 centimeters, three feet, maybe a bit more, right? So I'm gonna hit calculate. It tells us, first of all, how much longer the reflection has to travel over the direct sound. And that time span, that delta over the time it takes for the direct sound actually determines where that first cancellation happens. So that's the interesting number we want to look at. And in this case, for this typical home studio scenario, we get a first cancellation happening at 123 hertz, right? So just above 100 hertz. Now, let's go back to that graph of absorption coefficients and have a look at where that would actually sit. So 123 hertz is somewhere around here. That's where that first major dip caused by the floor reflection sits. And as you can tell, the carpet is far off from offering any kind of useful absorption at that frequency. Now, of course, the comb filter continues on higher up in the spectrum. And so the carpet might actually reduce some of the kind of highest outliers of this comb filter. But in the grand scheme of things, that's not particularly useful. The really bad part of the floor reflection, the thing that impacts what we hear the most, what we see the most in the, in the frequency response, is that first dip. And a carpet has zero chance at doing anything about it. So in effect, we could put down a, a carpet, but it won't do anything in terms of reducing the effect of the floor reflection. There's just no way at all that that would happen. And so that's really the main issue with putting a carpet down is that it doesn't work in a frequency, in a part of the frequency spectrum that is useful to us. And so it, it just reduces high frequency reverb because it still absorbs some of the kind of later reflections bouncing around in the room. But while it does that, it doesn't actually give us anything, anything useful back to improve what we're actually hearing from our speakers, right? So it kind of steals some of that limited resource of high frequency reverb that we have in our room, but it doesn't give us anything in return. So it's not really a useful tool if you're actually being serious about your treatment. Now, sometimes you're kind of stuck with a carpet already because the, the one room that you have available is fitted with a carpet. And in those cases, basically what you need to know is that ideally you want to remove that carpet and replace it with something like a hardwood floor, something nice and predictable. But if you can't, you're kind of stuck with it. And in that case, you just have to be aware of the effects that the carpet has, right? Which is basically that it just severely reduces high frequency reverb without actually improving the sound from your speakers. And you kind of have to just uh, take that into account if you're planning the rest of your treatment, right? So you might, for example, as I have here in my room, you might fit quite a few of your absorber panels with a simple type of diffuser front in order to not reduce the high frequency reverb any further than it already is. But in the grand scheme of things, just be aware that a carpet isn't really a good strategy for treating your room if you're actually serious about improving the sound from your speakers. What you want to focus on in a small room, as I've talked about many times on this channel, is bass absorption first. And in order to get bass absorption, you really need adequate depth in your absorption material. So in the grand scheme of things, the way to decide whether you should put in a carpet or leave in the carpet in your room, it depends on kind of how far you want to go with this. If you are just starting out, if you're working from a bare room and you just want to make ends meet and get some sort of reduction in the reverb time in order for the room to feel more comfortable, then by all means, put down a carpet. It'll, it'll just make it more pleasant to be in the room. Just be aware that it won't actually improve your ability to hear from your speakers or your ability to make mixing decisions or, or improve how your mixes translate out of the room. If you're serious about your treatment, then what you want to do is 
get rid of the carpet or not put one in in the first place because it just removes some of that high frequency reverb that you kind of need for your other panels to work with and make sure that you focus on deep enough absorption on bass trapping first. Now, if you're still unsure about what kind of bass trapping is right for your room, I've prepared a guide for you, the complete guide to bass traps and bass trapping, which you can get for free at the link in the description. It's basically like a summary of all the types of bass traps out there, all the different designs, porous material traps, so insulation material traps, all types of resonance traps, helm halts, membrane traps, diaphragmatic traps, whatever you want to call them, combined traps. They're all in there, very nicely laid out so you can figure out, first of all, how they work, whether they write for your room, if you should get them, how many you need to get, where you need to place them, and basically everything compiled together in one single document for you so it's really easy to figure out what is right for your room. So remember, if you're still unsure about the types of bass trapping, make sure you download my free guide to bass traps and bass trapping at the link in the description below. But as always, that's it for now. I hope that helped you understand how, how carpets work, whether you should actually put one in your room, how you need to think about carpets in terms of the floor reflection. I'll see you in the next video.